you know, it's strange for me going from my main channel to this one and having whiteboards because um, there's not a lot to put on a whiteboard when it comes to the World Cup, especially when you've just watched the third match of the day and that's it. Now, I missed the first match of the day, which was Serbia beating Costa Rica. Um, huge setback for Costa Rica. Costa Rica is one of those countries that flirts with being... All right, so you've got your, your World Cup contenders, your, your top top teams like your Germany, Brazil, and whatnot, and we'll get to them. And then you've got that next tier. So they're not really happy to be there, but they're not really contenders either, but they are good. And this loss to Serbia is huge for Costa Rica and for their hopes of, of moving on to, to the next round. Um, for Serbia, it's the first win they've had in a game one since they were Yugoslavia and did so. I think it said 98. Yeah, so it's been a while. Um, and, and as much fun as, as it is to, to see an, an surprising result, that's the least surprising result of the day. Mexico beats Germany 1-0. Now, here's the funny thing. Um, I've always liked the Mexican team. I've always liked their, 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 uh, their drive, their uh, competitiveness, and they've always had fun goaltenders. It's one of those things where maybe you can compare me to how my wife decides which team she likes better. She likes helmets. For me, when I'm when I'm watching the World Cup, I like fun goaltenders. These are guys who are a little more flamboyant, a little more out there, and a little more maybe they're maybe they're mouthier than other goalies, but they really stand out. And Mexico's always seem to have that. And today, uh, their goalie deserves a lot of credit. Their defense deserves a lot of credit. Germany had a ton of shots towards the net, not a whole lot on the net. So today, Germany suffers a huge defeat. Now. In the group stage, you can afford one loss. You win your next two, you're likely in the next round. But what this means for Mexico is huge. And this is something that this country has been on the verge of for a long time. Uh, there have been World Cups where I've thought, maybe Mexico can win this. But then it falls apart. Uh, there's a, um, a stigma to being a team that comes out of CONCACAF, which is the, the North American, South, uh, Central American um and, and Caribbean countries. And and there is there is a negative stigma attached to that. That, well, yeah, Mexico is good, but against some of these European teams. Today, uh, even though Germany dominated possession, way more passes, great possession, they looked frustrated. Very frustrated. And I think that could cost them later. Not just losing this game, but some of what we saw could cost them later. And yeah, it's the, the, the writing in red that I'll get to. Um, huge win for Mexico. Very proud of them on that win. That was fun. So yes, I'm, I'm cheering for Germany and, and England, but honestly, um, because I'm Canadian, I, I don't necessarily get that emotionally invested, but starting tomorrow with England, we'll see. They're against Tunisia. And of course the idea is, well, you know, it's an easy group. And all I can think is England never makes it easy. England always makes it difficult on themselves. All right. All you have to do is beat this team of boy scouts and you how did how did we draw with boy scouts now we got to play the germans how did you draw with Bo oh we're england never mind so they always make it hard on themselves and i'm i'm gonna hold my breath as to whether or not i see them beating tunisia tomorrow um especially after the results today so mexico takes a huge step forward to getting into that round of 16 and potentially having a seeding that allows them to advance to quarterfinals, semifinals. How far can Mexico go? Speaking of how far can they go, Brazil. Brazil gets out to a 1-0 lead in the first half, and I thought, all right, Brazil's back. And then the Swiss took over. What happened here? The Swiss get a 1-1 draw, and yet it feels like a loss for Brazil. Brazil's coming into this tournament after the drubbing they took from the Germans in the last tournament, and they should be really angry. And, and that anger should not translate into fouls and things of that nature. It should translate into goals. They should have won this game big. Not because the Swiss aren't a good team, because they are, but because they're Brazil, man. This is Brazilians are the best in the world. Maybe the world's caught up to Brazil. Maybe that's what we're seeing. Maybe this is a one-off. One Maybe they win their next two games, they go into the round of 16, and two weeks from now, we're not even talking about this game. Uh, this is where the group stage is interesting. Because Switzerland, this is a huge bonus for them, getting the 1-1 draw. Now they got to win their next two games. They're in the next round. That's it. 
um, you know, a, a tie with them, and Serbia and Costa Rica are the other two teams that that are in that in that group. You have to think Switzerland and Brazil with this result now should be the teams in the next round. But we've had a lot of upsets. So for yellow cards, and I had to look this up because I know the rules change every now and then, so I wanted to make sure it was the same. Two yellow cards equal a one-game suspension. So if anybody that you watch got a yellow card today, and I'm looking at you, Muller, um, a one-game suspension happens if he gets one more yellow card between now and the semifinals. Doesn't, doesn't reset until the semifinals. So that's a lot. And there were a lot of yellow cards handed out. I thought there was a ton handed out on the Germans in the second half. And I'm not sure if that was just by imagination or not. But, and then there was one on, on a Mexican player that I'm not sure what that was about. I, I'm not really sure. But uh, yellow cards, I think, are going to play a major role in this tournament. I saw them in the Brazil-Switzerland game as well. And it's, it's sometimes it's, it's just random. And sometimes it's somebody really important. So we'll see how this affects, thing, affects things. The other thing I want to point out as well is in this result between Brazil and Switzerland, I'm going to mention this, the Swiss goaltender was excellent. So again, goaltenders that, that really stand out because you've got a net that's huge. And a lot of the time with goaltenders, it's guesswork, especially on a penalty. On a penalty, it's like, all right, um, I'm going to kind of, kind of bounce back and forth and then I'm going to dive. When he starts to charge, once he hits that ball, I'm going to dive. If he hits the ball right and I'm diving right, it's a great save. If he hits the ball left and I'm diving right, I look like a fool. Um, I feel bad for goaltenders in soccer that way because really, honestly, um, they don't get very many shots they can save. And, and when you see somebody make the kind of saves that were made today by the Swiss goaltender against Brazil in the second half when they were coming on, and for the Mexican goaltender against Germany, when they were doing everything they could except get that ball in the net. And I do wonder, will one of those yellow cards come back to bite Germany? Because think about it, if one of those players that got in trouble today and got a yellow card gets one in the next game, they're out of the third game. Maybe that is a big deal. We'll see what happens as it goes along. Um, I may track who has yellow cards and who doesn't between games. Um, when we start getting into games two, and three of the of the round because it's it's interesting to know who's on the verge and not only that but for players who are on the verge say you're you've got one yellow card maybe you don't make that slide check you otherwise might because maybe you're worried you're not going to get the ball you're going to get him and you're going to get a yellow card and be out the next game so maybe it affects your game just that little bit because you're worried about getting a yellow card and and i'll be honest there were plays that i saw yellow cards that i went that's interesting. And other plays where I'm like, so that's a yellow card. And then I didn't see it. So if you are a fan of football slash soccer and you had that same reaction, let me know in the comment section below. Because it, it just, it didn't seem to be entirely consistent. And I know the Aussie coach is still upset about the way things went down yesterday. And there's always going to be controversy. Because even when a, when a referee is looking at a play, he's still making a, 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 a judgment. So we'll see. We'll see how this plays out as the tournament goes along. Uh, I'd hate to see a controversial play decide the, the the World Cup, but it's happened before. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Today was fun, and tomorrow should be even more so. I think there's four games tomorrow. Either way, we'll see. And by, I think it's Tuesday, we'll have seen everybody play. Or no, today. Tomorrow. Come on, Shannon, get it together. Tomorrow, we will have seen every team play at least one game. And then Tuesday, we're getting into games too. So there you go. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. I know I'm wearing hockey. I know I always talk hockey. But I really enjoy the World Cup. And I had to do videos about it. And I just want to say as well that as a hockey person, I think that on this coverage, Andy Petrello is doing a very good job on TSN of holding her own with clearly very experienced soccer slash football minds on the panel. I think Andy's done a good job. Andy Petrello is somebody that um, I've always kind of kind of looked up to because she really started out as 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 a fan in the same nation in the same vein as what I've been, and she's she's worked her way up to where she's on TV, and I I, I admire her for that. Um, and it, it's nice to see that even though she's not in the Hockey Night Canada crew, she's still doing things that are sports related, and she doesn't seem that unknowledgeable with uh, with the football slash soccer things. 
Notice I'm calling it both because I don't want Euros to come in and say, oh, come on, soccer? Uh, and, and I get it because I do want to call it football, but if I call it football, then, you know, the NFL crowd and, and fans in other countries are going to say, well, no, we call it soccer too. So weird. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll talk to you again soon.